Greetings, welcome back to Pink Oddbird. So to get started, we're gonna go ahead and get our non-stick mat or something that uh, you don't mind getting messy because it will get messy. <laughs> I found some really neat papers at the thrift store. This one is kind of like a thin sort of, um, Dolly said it looked like a kind of rice paper. And this one, um, she said it looked a little bit more like a hand handmade paper, which is really neat. So I decided that I wanted to try and use some of these products to get those papers colored. So we're gonna start with the thinner of the two papers. I'm being really cautious with this because I'm not really sure how it's gonna react, uh, if it's gonna like tear apart or fall apart. So I'm not that generous with what I'm doing in, in the beginning stages here because I'm just kind of testing the water. So I'm starting out with some distress stains. This one is brushed corduroy. And I know that the look that I wanted to go for is sort of like uh, earth tones, grungy, um, just kind of like dirty borders, random splotchy um, designs on the paper. That's really kind of what we're doing here. So let's see what happens. And looking at this now, you might be sitting there thinking, hey, bro, you need more water. And uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I do. But like I said, I wanted to be careful in the beginning because I wasn't really sure how this paper is going to react. So I didn't want it to fall apart. I, I really wanted the color to stick into the places where I put it. So my water amounts were very limited here, but I was still able to get the color on. And because I have no patience, I am going to hit it with the heat gun and uh, see what kind of result we get here. So I have it a little dried here. And as you can see, the color is in the paper, but it also kind of faded out a little. So I, I like that, but I think I want to add a little bit more. So here we go with some more distress stain. Um, this is alcohol ink and I would say skip this. Uh, I was inspired to do this video by my buddy Dolly because she has a really... Um, a really neat tutorial on her page and I was like you know I have a lot of tools or supplies that I don't really ever use so let me go ahead and break those out and try and do some stuff so um, that's what this was really inspired by and I will link to her video down below Okay, so let's go ahead and try these Lindy's Magicals on another piece of this thin paper. And don't use your fingers, you guys. Don't do what I do. <laughs> you can use uh, something that's really thin, something that has a little scoop on it. Just don't, I mean, you can use your fingers, but anyway. <laughs> They're called Magicals because as you can see when you wet them, they turn into all these different magical colors. And um, there's a base color, like a main color. And then from there, they have like um, other colors that sprout from them. And the, the colors that I picked were like an industrial color set. And they also have some shimmer to them. So it's really pretty. So I just laid an extra piece of paper on top to absorb some of that. Because as you can see, I was getting a little bit more confident here. I totally wet the paper. Um, so that those magicals could get on there and disperse. But as you can see, like I only put two colors down, but there are several other colors in this uh, paper, which I love this look. All right, now let's try some paints. So as you can see, like I said, I'm just trying all kinds of different mediums. We've gone through distress stains, um, magicals. I've used some, um, that's a purple boho spray and some good old fashioned acrylic paint. So this time I'm wetting the paper again. I should have used a little bit more water here, but 
you know, I, I'm just trying things out. It, ultimately, I like the way they all came out. And when you go and try this, if you do, um, just be more generous with the water at this stage than I was. Um, you'll get better, like, um, like it seeps, I guess the way to explain it would be it seeps through the page a little better and it kind of like floats out and gives it a nice like look and you'll you'll see that a little bit later in the video uh, that actually does start to happen on some of the pages that I did. And as you can see, I'm totally blending like some of the mediums together little by little so that you can get some of these different like neat effects of the blending and layering as you can see like with the blue and the black, purple and the brown. It, I, it's really pretty. I love the way that one came out. So let's try one more on this thin paper. We're going to go back to the magicals and I want to do some darker colors this time. So the last time we used the magicals we did a little bit lighter. There's some tattered angels and my black um, Lindy's. The, it's also a Magicals, but it comes in a shaker, so um, you can buy them that way also. So I put on one color here, and since I wet the paper, you can kind of see that it's already starting to change colors a little. You can do this on a dry surface or wet, so you can put it on something um, wet as it is, and it'll start, as you can see, and then when you wet it more, it's gonna start moving those colors around. Now I'm taking my heat gun here because I want to move those colors even more without completely saturating my entire workspace. <laughs> so, and then since there's a lot here, like as you can see, I didn't use that much. They're super pigmented. I'm going to take another piece of paper and layer it on there and voila. Magic. <laughs> And of course, I want to go ahead and sop up that uh, residual um, bit of color there because we don't waste. We don't do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that color set into the page. I wanted to try and use the spray, but the sprayer is kind of messed up inside, so it didn't really work. So I um, just decided to pour a little bit of it out and uh, make some sprinkles or um, splatters or splotches. Um, with this kind of, um, it's kind of like a orangey bronze color. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look back at the results of what we've got for the thin, thin pages that we did here. So here's a couple looks at these. That's what we've got. Now I'm going to go ahead and show them all to you. So there we go. And as you can see, like you don't have to use all these products that I use. The idea behind me using all these different products was that if you don't have um, one product, you can use another. If you don't have that, you can use another or a combination of what you do have. So just use what you have. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the thicker paper, the handmade paper. And again, we'll go ahead and start out with the Distress Stains. And there are three pages here. They didn't tear, and I didn't want the pages to tear like all wonky. So I just left them how they were because these pages are really thick.
So as you can see guys, getting a little bit more and more comfortable with the products that I'm using with the water and with how I want this um, these products to spread and blend on the page. And this paper, it is reacting a little differently than the other paper, but it's still doing like a good job at like dispersing through the paper and, and you know, giving nice blending effects. Um, and as you can see there, it tore, it tore on its own, which is perfectly fine because I'm going to go ahead and do, um, something different when I get these into the book. So I haven't really decided if I wanted to use them as pages or as little journaling spaces separately. We'll just, we'll see, but I do have an idea for how I want them to go in as pages. So I'm deciding to pull a little red and turquoise into the mix here wetting that paper see how it's starting to just bleed through and that's perfect and you saw me check a little while ago how it looked um, on the other side of the paper it's just as it's pretty it's fine I love the I, I want the point of this video is for color to get everywhere including my hands as you saw <laughs> And again, I just decided to soak up that residual. I love the way that page turned out. It's so pretty. Perfect for the theme that I'm going to be using it for. But so there's the dried, well, the almost dried product. And I decided to leave that one pretty minimal. And then here's the first one that we did. So there's no rhyme or reason to this really, guys. It's just really going in, playing with colors, playing with what you have, and just seeing how it comes out. Like if it's, you know... And I got these papers from the thrift store for a dollar, so I, I mean, it's not going to be a big travesty if I mess up a little. So I'm going back to the magicals and I wet my board here and I just am sprinkling the magicals onto the board with a little bit of green distress stain. And I'm going to put some black magicals in there as well and I'm going to go ahead and wet those a little bit more and start applying those to the paper. Now, I'm doing this one a little bit different. As you can see, I'm letting it soak into the edges of the paper. I, you know, I started out with like the, the brush and then I also um, used my finger to blend a little. You could see I did some paper color transfers and now I'm just letting the paper soak up whatever it wants to soak up. So I'm showing you different techniques here of how you can get this color onto the page. So lots of different options and choices for what you can do in that regard. All right, so here's our results from some of the magicals on this paper. Um, it's perfectly fine if you wanna leave some of them minimalistic. It's still gonna have a pretty effect um, in the end when it's all said and done. So let's go ahead and try a few more going into the acrylic paints again. Some of that boho purple spray. Those recollections, they just don't spray like at all. I, I don't even, I wouldn't recommend those just for that reason. Like, it's pointless <laughs> so but that's okay because I found another way to use them so all right we're pulling in that purple as you can see we're getting some nice bleedage here the colors are blooming really nicely in this and I decided to actually get even a little bit more creative I really wet the brush and put some of that color on there and as you can see I'm letting droplets go onto the page and those spread out so nicely onto the page. I love the way it looks. So again that's another technique that you can use um, for getting paint color.
I'm just bringing this bronze metallic in the, in the turquoise in for some pops. Um, this is really one of my most favorite pages, I think, that we've done of the lot. Um, which one Which one did you like? Where, which uh, product did you like the most? Which paper outcome did you like the most? What do you think? Let's talk about it in the comments below. Let me know because you guys know that I love chit-chatting with you down there. So leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. So the last little hoorah here. We're going to just swoop all this up onto this last page. This is back to one of those thin pages. I just picked one because it was loose already. And I'm getting that last bit of color up. I'm blotching it here because it was like a lot kind of. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. And the last thing I did here was I lightly um, and distantly sprayed them all with one little spritz of this like yellowish, goldish, tattered angels color that I have. Um... And I love that little last touch that it gives. And um, yeah, that's going to finish it. So what I'm going to do next is get ready to show you all the different uh, pages that we did. So again, let me know what you guys think. So here we go. This is the outcome. So of course, I hope you found this video useful. If you decide to try it out, let me know. Tag me on Instagram. Leave me a comment below and I'll check you out and uh, see what you guys have done and i hope you found it useful so until next time to the loo